Hello everyone and welcome to my bold and beautiful official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Sheila's life and city are reclaimed by Steffi. Sheila was fuming at Deacon's apartment because Steffi had shoved her. Steffi said that Sheila had pushed Steffi too far. Steffi claimed that she was returning and that Sheila would never meddle with Steffi or her family again. Steffi didn't have to be so protective, according to Sheila, who had finally found true love. Sheila went on to say that she was well aware that she had a lot of work ahead of her. Steffi refused to believe it, claiming that Sheila was pure evil. Sheila said that she was in love and content, and that all she wanted was to live a regular life. Steffi remarked, I thought Deacon was smarter than that. Deacon assured Steffi and her family that Sheila posed no danger to them. Sheila vowed not to endanger Steffi or her children. Just put your trust in me, Sheila added. Steffi remarked that Sheila had to be joking, and she couldn't help but wonder how Brooke and Hope felt about Deacon and Sheila. Deacon explained that he had worked hard to repair his relationships with Hope and Brooke and that he was with Sheila because he felt that people, like himself, could improve. Steffi believed the transformation was a deception that Sheila intended to harm and corrupt Deacon. Sheila stated that everyone was overjoyed that Steffi had returned home. Steffi told Sheila to be quiet. Steffi claimed she departed town to protect herself and her children, but she later realized she didn't run. Steffi insisted that Los Angeles was her hometown and that she had been raised to battle. Sheila decided to respect Steffi's decision not to include Sheila in her life, and she hoped that this might change someday. Oh, there you have it. You still want to be in Finn's life, Steffi accused Sheila, laughing at Deacon's belief that he could stop Sheila. Steffi stated she didn't need Deacon to protect her, and that if Sheila approached Steffi's family, she would answer to Steffi, not Deacon, Ridge, or Finn. Steffi declared that she was not frightened of Sheila, and that if Sheila mistreated Steffi, Sheila would pay. Steffi stated that she was a forester, and foresters were not afraid to fight. Steffi then punched Sheila in the face. Steffi stated that it was for shooting her and her husband, and that Sheila would wish she was in jail if she came near Steffi's family again. Ridge was grateful that Luna had discovered Eric's old stapler in the CEO's office. Ridge stroked the stapler with Eric's initials and showed Luna the backside, which said, Love Stephanie. Eric had received it as a gift from his wife when he first started the business. Ridge claimed he assumed he'd thrown it away and was relieved Luna had discovered it. Ridge flashed back to the day Eric noticed that the stapler had gone missing. He remembered how unhappy Eric had been when Ridge claimed it was old and no longer worked. RJ, Brooke, and Katie discussed the incredible gift Ridge had given Eric, the gift of winning, at the design office. Brooke was confident that Ridge would make Eric's final days as beautiful as possible. Ridge, according to RJ, was preparing the CEO's office for Eric's triumphal return. Katie thought it was touching and Archie stated he'd treasure the time he'd spent with Eric. Brooke noted that it was difficult for everyone, but no one's heart was breaking more than Ridge's. They talked about keeping Eric's identity a secret. Archie stated that Eric did not want to be perceived as weak or pitied. Brooke stated that they would do whatever they could to support and adore Eric. Later, Luna was alone in the office. Archie came in and said he'd been looking for her. She informed him that Ridge had directed her to locate Eric's old belongings for the CEO's office. Arjun remarked that Ridge was restoring the office to its former glory. Luna thought Arjun did the right thing by his grandfather and parents, and she congratulated him and Eric on their victory. Arjun admitted that Eric had not won. Arjun stated that after learning about Eric's situation, Ridge awarded him the victory. Luna stated it was the best thing someone could do for someone, and R.G. should be proud of the designs he created with Eric. R.G. responded that Luna was his inspiration, 
She said that it had been the most thrilling event of her life, but she was unsure if she should express so in light of Eric's predicament. Archie told them that Eric would want them to enjoy every moment, and they kissed. Donna told the coughing Eric in the showroom that he'd done everything he needed to do and that it was time to call the doctor. Eric was adamantly opposed to doing so. He wanted to cherish every second of his triumph over Ridge. Eric recognized Ridge's brilliance and did not take the victory lightly, but it was time for Eric to regain his office and Forrester creations. Eric remarked that he was no longer obsolete or destined to be abandoned. Donna responded that he had never been. Dan near, he said, adding that it was all too simple to toss stuff away, out of date and broken items. Like me, Eric said of the old stapler that hadn't meant anything to Ridge. That is no longer the case. That's all there is to it. My name is Forrester Creations. They hugged after Donna agreed. Donna later spent time with her sisters. Donna was overjoyed with how nicely Eric's day had gone after he'd gone off to retake his workplace. Katie and Brooke exchanged looks. Ridge was arranging the last of Eric's crystal trophies in Eric's office. Eric came in, asking if he might still retake his office. Ridge explained that he'd simply put it back the way Eric had it, and Eric had won the challenge fairly and squarely. Fair and square, Eric said again. Eric chuckled as he examined his old prizes. He selected a photograph of himself with a young Ridge. Take a look at these memories. It's been a long journey, Eric remarked. Ridge responded that it was not quite over. Eric inquired as to Ridge's well-being. Ridge admitted he didn't enjoy losing, but at least it was to the best. Eric agreed that he would have said something similar. Eric expressed gratitude to Ridge for the office decorations. Ridge praised Eric for molding him into the man he was. Ridge stated that he would never forget it. Ridge, according to Eric, had no idea what those four walls meant to him. It had been huge when Eric and Stephanie first purchased the building and established up shop. They'd set out to ignite the fashion business, and they'd succeeded. Eric claimed they dreamed behind that desk, fantasized of everything they wanted to accomplish, and he'd been hungry. The desk represented more than just his memories. It represented dreams and the future. Ridge said that there could be no future without a history, and he recalled being a child observing his father. Ridge had always wanted to be a designer, even before he knew what it was. Ridge stated that Eric had given it to him and that he would keep it forever. Ridge, according to Eric, had it all that time. Eric believed that Ridge's legacy would outlast his, and that Ridge would be greater than him. Ridge stated that it was impossible. Eric said that it was not impossible, it would happen, just not right now. Ridge motioned for Eric to have a seat and enjoy his workstation. Ridge said he adored his father so much. Eric responded that he was aware of it and that he too adored Ridge. Ridge requested that Eric peek in the desk drawer. Eric consented and went in search of the stapler. Ridge stated that Luna had discovered it alongside everything else. Ridge apologized and said that he hadn't realized. Eric rose and hugged Ridge.